Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome. Welcome to all of those visiting our church online. Uh, if you call and leave a message or email us, we'll try to get back to you and answer any questions you might have. Welcome to all of our members also. Uh, we miss you. Uh, we long to see you. Thank you to all those who've been sending in offerings. Um, it warms our hearts. Uh, and don't forget all the various ways that you can give. And just a reminder also, pray for one another. Uh, pray for those who mourn, like the Stetzer family. Uh, pray for those who are experiencing various difficulties or hardships at this time. And pray that we could gather soon and gather safely to receive Christ's supper together. That's going to be a wonderful day, isn't it? We miss you. May the Lord grant you joy this day.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment for reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant faithfulness to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's church, that they may avoid whatever is contrary to their confession and follow all such things as are pleasing to you through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 40. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might. And because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 3. John writes, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself even as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, chapter 16. Jesus said, A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, in a little while, you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, a little while and you will not see me, and again, a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. 
you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we gather together uh, through all through electronic means. We still, as God's people, hear your word. We pray that by your grace, you may allow us to grow in this faith and knowledge and that we may rejoice in this gift now and into eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples had a problem. They were pained in their mind. They were pained in their spirit. Things were not the way they were looking forward to. They were confused, well, frankly, by the whole night. It was Monday, Thursday. And what started off as a, a celebration of the Passover ended with Jesus talking about betrayal. Ended with Jesus talking about things that were hard for them to understand. And then he came with these strange words we heard tonight. The words, I will be with you yet a little while, and then you will see me no more. And after a little while, you will see me again. And they were troubled by them. Jesus departing? Uh, no way. We don't want that to happen at all. We can't be. This is our life. This is what we've based our entire existence on for the last three, three and a half years. If he was gone, their dreams were gone. Their self-made hopes were shattered. There could be no joy. There could only be sadness. How could they not be with Jesus? And that, after a little while, you'll see me again stuff? Well, that was just all way too confusing to them. Jesus had, though, a simple response for these disciples. Some ways it's so simple that we often overlook it. Your affliction and your pain will become joy. That's Jesus' response. Yes, there will be a time when there will be no joy for you, but there will come a time when your sorrow and your affliction and your pain, the stuff that tugs deepest at your heart, will become joy. Yes, for a little while, Jesus says, you will not see me. I will suffer, I will die, I will be buried, and you will mourn, and you will hurt. But it's only for a little time. For after a little while, I will rise. I will live. I will ascend to my Father in heaven. And with that ascension, I will rule over the joy, over the heaven and earth for you. I will cling to our Father, begging him to do nothing more than to do what is right and best. Your joy will be there, for Christ has come. He has appeared. That which brought sorrow is over. A new thing has happened. The last days are in play. Christ is present. What seemed to be final and what seemed to be most real is undone. Christ is living. That is the joy that Jesus was proclaiming. From death to life, from sorrow to joy. For Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, and that would be the joy of the people. The joy which Jesus talks about, well, we see it present throughout the Bible, don't we? We see it present in the Psalms, that in the midst of the problems of their life, in the midst of the sorrows of their life, in the midst of, of running away, they rejoice in God's goodness. Think about Peter. It says in 1 Peter, Beloved, do not be surprised at fi the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice. And that kind of verse is repeated throughout 1 Peter. Or even better yet, think about Paul in the jail at Philippi. He was in chains. He was arrested. He was going to be brought before and tried. And then sitting in the darkness of those jails of that day, chained so he could not move, he was singing praises to God. He was rejoicing, for he was found worthy 
to suffer for the name of Christ. See, that is the joy the Scriptures talk about. The joy that though we mourn for a little while, yet it turns to joy for our Savior is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And there is the source and the reason for our joy. For the old is passing away, and the new is coming. It's Paul saying, I can be content in whatever circumstance I find myself. For whatever is lacking now, we know that something far better is coming. And for that reason, for that reason, I can have joy today. Wouldn't that be wonderful to live in that joy? To have a a, a portion of that joy. We struggle with that, don't we? We desire it. We wish we had it. We find ways to prop up the feelings and emotions and the looks of joy even when our hearts are far from it. Why don't we have that joy? I think it's pretty simple. We've got misplaced gods in our lives. We start to slide a little ways into, into idolatry without even realizing it. I mean, we don't bow down, do we, before wood idols? Not that I know of anyway. But what we do is we begin to worship the things of this life. And we do it so subtly, we don't even notice it. And because it fits in so easily with our surroundings, it looks normal. That pretty soon what becomes most important is pleasing our wife or our husband. What becomes most important to us are the good things of our lives, like our children, and trying to give them all the experiences, all that one time that we had. And apart from those children being there, we don't know anything that can be, well, can bring us joy. We look at our homes and our second homes. And we sacrifice and scrimp for those. And and then we we let God's church go without. And we let things that really matter not come into play. You see, what happens is pretty soon we're focusing on those gifts. And we forget the giver. We focus on those and we find we think in those the things that should bring us joy. But they change, and they waver, and they move in this life. And we forget the one thing that is unchangeable. Isaiah talks about it. Peter quotes it in his letter. All flesh is like grass. It fades. It burns up in the sun, in the heat. But the word of the Lord never changes. See, the focus is to be on Christ. It is to be on Him. See, all old things are passing away and the new are being brought to life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And a new time has begun. Christ has risen. And we see Him not with our own eyes as Peter and James and John and Thomas and all the disciples did, but we see Him in His Word. We see him in his work as he comes to us in bread and wine and the waters of baptism. He is risen and he shows himself to us so that as we live in this time for a short while of sorrow, we have this time of joy. We have this time now when we realize the new age has broken in. The last days are here that we belong to God and Jesus Christ. And so we live now, not only in this time, but in eternity. See, Christ is risen, and that is the basis for our joy, for our sin and the old is dying away. And what comes up is the way of Christ. Christ is risen. We can never escape that any time, especially during Easter. Christ is risen, so joy is ours. And we enjoy the blessings of the day. We enjoy our homes, our second homes, our families, our spouses, school, and all those other gifts. But we never forget that they cannot interfere with the gifts of God and Jesus. See, Christ is risen. 
The old is passing away. We now belong to God. He is the one to whom we're married. And our family, well, they're you. Those who hear and do the word of the Lord. See, Christ is risen. Here is our joy. We belong to God our Father. It's not the stuff of this life that should be bringing us joy. If that is, well, that just exposes the idols that we have set up. No matter how good those gifts are. But Christ is risen. Our sin has been taken away. Our guilt has been removed. And through faith we stand before our Father in heaven. So though for a little while we might sorrow at not seeing Jesus yet face to face, and though for a little while we may sorrow as we experience the evils and the problems of this world, and though for a little while we may mourn at the sight of death, we rejoice, for Christ is risen. And we anticipate that day when we see him face to face. So yes, we have joy even in the midst of quarantines and isolation. For Christ is risen. And our joy is found in Jesus. Our joy is found in his resurrection. For a new time has become. The new age of Jesus has broken into this age of the world. This age where Satan seems to rule. Rejoice and be glad, for you belong to him. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. To God alone be all glory. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God found in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, in the resurrection of your Son, a new age has begun, a new creation. In the midst of our sorrows and troubles, we ask that you would give us joy. Joy in your word, your promises, joy in your sacraments. For we know the end of the story, that we too will rise because of him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, give us joy in the mission and ministry of St. John, as we are your hands in this world, that we get to share the gospel with others. And already now, we ask that you would prepare us to be able to gather again in this sanctuary, to hear that word together, to pray together and sing together, and to receive the supper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless this nation. 
our state, our cities and communities, including the city of Detroit. Guide and bless President Trump and Governor Whitmer that they might make wise decisions. Guard and protect all police, firefighters, EMTs, doctors, nurses, and all those who serve our bodily needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless our homes, that husband and wife might love and cherish each other, and that children might be blessed. We pray for the unemployed, for the hungry, the fearful, the anxious, and the lonely during this time of pandemic. Grant to all of us faith and hope and love and an increasing joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, heal the sick according to your will, especially those with COVID-19. Grant them healing and patience to endure their trials. We also pray that you would comfort those who mourn, including the family of Jim Stetzer and the family of Paul Sanders, and that you would continually remind them that because your son lives, we also shall live, and neither life nor death can separate us from that love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.